I think back then you had about 5,000 subscribers. So it's been a journey. Mm-hmm. It really has. And we have to deal with Michael every day, which is, a, <laughs> is the biggest part of this journey. <laughs> <laughs> right then. Yeah. Since we've uh, lost a bit of time, should we just uh, get on with L Podcast Day? Yeah, let's get straight into it, Mom. <laughs> Hello shoppers and welcome to episode 28 of Fruck Unwrapped. Today we have offers on informative insight, trivia game shows and mildly offensive comedy all in our supermarket range. But first, let me introduce you to our friendly staff. Rumour has it that this guy was once removed from a Morrison's for thinking that self-service meant something completely different. (laughs) That's a masturbation joke. It's Stuart Bullock. How How, How did you find out about that? Uh, I spoke to uh, Theo, which is weird that he knew that story. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Are you he well? Drops me in it a lot. Yeah, I'm good, man. I'm good. Excellent. I'm well. Um, yes. Yeah. Slight, sl- slight cold, but it's only to be expected at this time of year. I won't complain, though. I won't complain. And you wouldn't. You certainly wouldn't find me missing a podcast for a, sni- <laughs> a slight snuffle. So I'm here and raring to go. How are you? I am very, very well and excited for tonight's show. Correct. And next, bing bong, clean up on aisle four. That's another masturbation joke. It's Michael Jameson. Well, Jake's on you, Nate, because I'd go to the customer toilets and lock myself in. That's the safe way. <laughs> oh, oh safe way. Great gag. Excellent gag. How are you doing, Michael? Cheers. Yeah, good, thank you. How are you, man? Uh, as I said to Stuart only minutes ago, I'm well. Good, I'm quite glad to hear it. <laughs> And finally, we welcome a newbie to the podcast family. He's a guy who has his own food reviewing channel, whose videos are slick, well presented, and classy. Him appearing on this podcast is tantamount to seeing the Queen in Little. Please welcome <laughs> Riley Sirola. How are you doing, Riley? Hey guys, thanks. Thanks for having me here. You are welcome. Uh, now, obviously, some of our listeners may not know who you are, so let's sort of delve in and get a bit, uh, get to know you a bit better, and you know. Uh, promote you, let's say. So, first of all, where where can people find you and uh, and your your work? Well, at the moment, um, my main hub is YouTube, so you can find me there, uh, Riley Sorola forward slash Riley dot Sorola. Uh, so, I mean, that's really it. Mainly, it's uh, food, f- mainly food reviews uh, centered around London, but you will occasionally find food reviews. Anywhere uh, I happen to be on my travels, and speaking of travels, I also, you know, dwell into, you know, travel vlogs. Try and do some travel films here and there, uh, just to mix it up. But um, it's mainly a food channel. Um, I'm a big, I'm a big foodie. So, uh, how did you get into the food reviewing game? What sort of, what, what was the inspiration? Was there a moment that sort of clicked in your head, or did you watch someone else's videos? Or certainly not trying to. Fish for compliments or anything like that, but <laughs> I mean, it massively sounds like you are. Yeah, well, actually, but... well, 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 I'm sorry to you know disappoint you, but uh, you know the inspiration didn't come from from you guys, so <laughs> that's that. Um, <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. Um, no, actually, really, what actually happened was uh, I had a I had a different uh, YouTube channel um, when I went to uh, where was it? Ayanapa. It was a couple of years back. Uh, me and my friends were just messing around with the camera, and I decided to just piece it together and just completely forgot about it. A couple of months later, I'm seeing that the video has about 50,000 views. So I'm thinking, wow, wow, this is something that people like to watch. So I thought, okay, maybe I could start a YouTube channel and um, start some travel films. But then I said to myself, yeah, I'm, I'm too, too fucking broke for that. <laughs> can't be um, can't be uh, traveling, can't can't make a YouTube channel focused on that because I, I can't afford it. So I thought, yeah. all right, what's the next best thing? Well, I love eating. I eat out a lot. Let's make a food review channel, and uh, that's how it was born. Lovely. Okay. Now, your channel differs to ours, where where we uh, all basically just sit on a sofa and review snacks every week. You you obviously go out there and you're hitting up food joints uh, yes. every week. Um, how do you sort of pick where you're going to eat? Is that sort of 
something you just sort of think, oh, fancy eating here, or is there sort of things that you you look at as being big hitters? Are you invited to places, recommended places? How how do you sort of come up with where you want to go to next? Okay, uh, it's it's a bit of a mix and match. Like I, I'm a big foodie, so I have a hit list of of places that I will want to go to at some point of time. I will sometimes go on the um, the World Wide Web and just look up. Just try and find out about new spots that are popping up in London or elsewhere. Um, sometimes I do go on TripAdvisor, see what the reviews are like, and sometimes I get um, recommended by you know you know it's word of mouth other other people telling you you know you need to try this spot, you need to try that spot. So yeah, it's a bit of it's a bit of a mix, a bit of everything. Yeah. Um, boring question, Lert. What's the best place you've reviewed? Oh, that's difficult. Uh, when you say best place in terms of well, in terms all right, of what, taste, what, in terms of experience, yeah. Well, well just what, you, what what's the favorite? Just overall, sort of your favorite place that you reviewed on whatever scale you want, whether it's just the taste or the whole thing. It's a tough one. I will say that one place that really, really sticks to mind is a place overseas in Amsterdam, mm-hmm. a place called Sazanka. It's the only. Michelin star um, teppanyaki restaurant in Europe. Wow. Oh. Yeah. Wicked. I think that makes uh, makes a couple of Michelin star food uh, food eaters now. <laughs> I wonder how long it'd take you to bring that up, Michael. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know. <laughs> you guys in your exclusive club of paying to eat in restaurants um oh, any, just, any... Uh, just once coming back to i wonder how how would that work then in terms of loving a michelin star teppanyaki restaurant because i mean do, do they still do the, the 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 kind of traditional theatrical teppanyaki thing of cooking the food on the on the grill in front of you and serving it up that way yes they still they still do it the traditional way that's, um that's got to be a just, challenge it's... then to get that to get the food up to michelin star standard when it's yeah yeah I mean, what 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 I do, what what really stuck to mind when I was there was the fact that, um, you know, what's typical of a Michelin star restaurant, just the you know the whole vibe, the the atmosphere, uh-huh. uh, the way the staff present themselves, the way they are, uh, they you know address you. Yeah. So you 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 know you've got all of that, and then just teppanyaki. So you know you're sat you're sat at the grill, and they're just cooking it right there in front of you. Mm. But um. Yeah, it was an experience. Cool, man. Um, on, on the flip side, any any horror stories? I mean, the, the reason I asked that is because I saw one of your, I think it was one of your more recent ones, Herman, Herman's a German. Mm-hmm. And, uh, not a fan. Well, that, not yeah, a fan. <laughs> and I was thinking, <laughs> like, actually, like, do you find that difficult when, because we've done a few reviews in restaurants, and generally speaking, we've been lucky enough that the food's been pretty tasty and we've enjoyed the, the restaurant, et cetera, et cetera. Do you find it difficult when you're sort of sat there and you're sort of, you know, I don't think it was the most negative review you know I've ever seen. But at the same time, you're sort of sat there saying, "Yeah, this is no good. I'm not really enjoying this, and I'd rather go somewhere else." Do you find that awkward when you're sort of stuck in the place? I'll be honest with you. Um, every every single time I step inside a building with that camera, I feel awkward, <laughs> regardless of whether it's a, it's a it's a good review I give or a bad review I get. I, I I feel very awkward. I feel like you know, just very self conscious, but. I just try to break through it. With regards to, you know, giving, you know, not such a good review when you're inside a, inside a place, I am quite like, okay, are they listening to me? Are they, are they nearby? Are they, can, can they hear what I'm saying? Mm. And, um, <laughs> but, you know, I need, to, I need to send the main message. I don't want to lie to my subscribers. I don't want to lie to my viewers. And I have to give my own personal opinion on the space. So, and and I guess that's it works for me because I'm I can I can you know balance it in a way where I don't really bash it in the restaurant, but mm-hmm. then I can always do my after thoughts at another place, which I you know probably seen that I've done that in a few mm-hmm. my food yeah. reviews. Yeah, m- much better because we obviously often our reviews are sort of instant reactions, but uh, sometimes you sort of just need to finish the meal and uh just have a little think about it afterwards and yeah I've, I've given reviews to whatever it might be on this channel and then after i thought actually i was probably a bit too generous or a bit too harsh on that and yeah so actually giving totally giving agree. it yeah giving it a bit of time is not 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 a bad thing mm. um i've got a question here 
It's okay. been in- intriguing me watching your videos. Okay, what's, <laughs> thanks. What's the uh, what's the thought process between uh, uh, behind reviewing the toilets? <laughs> <laughs> I think I think I know why you do it, but I just want to I just want to you know hear 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 the man explain how most of his uh, <laughs> restaurant reviews start off in the toilet, basically. Okay, so um, I guess. I guess the reason why I did it in the first place was, you know, I was coming from a, a place where if the toilets are filthy and disgusting, then that says something about the hygiene in the restaurant as a whole. Yep. I know yep. that's not, it's not necessarily an exclusive thing, but the general consensus, if, it, if the toilets are not in a good state, then the chances are maybe the kitchen isn't and maybe the rest of the restaurant isn't. So. Yep. It was just to give people an idea of the cleanliness of the restaurant as a whole. But I've, I've been getting a lot of um, smack about the, the whole restaurant <laughs> toilets. And I'm actually thinking about scrapping the whole thing entirely. No. 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 no, 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 no. I like them. I like them. Mm. How many times do you go in a restaurant and, like, your wife, well, your now wife, uh, your wife is like, oh, look, the toilets are amazing or whatever. And I, Claire and I talk about it, we're like, Oh, that is a posh and all that kind of thing. It it, it is a big deal, especially if they're like amazing. Yeah. Um, and I think you're absolutely spot on. It is it is massively a sign of um, the cleanliness of the of the whole restaurant. Because I've been to some really cracking restaurants, and then you go go up to their uh, bathroom, and they got like a bar of soap, and they're just like dirty and tiny. It's like what? Is, this is just so weird. Mm. Like mm. this, it leaves a sour taste in your mouth. It does. It <laughs> it does. does. You, do if you eat the urine, okay. <laughs> well, what really annoys me, actually, more more than more than the hygiene is is sometimes the setup of the toilets just 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 doesn't make sense. I'm, maybe you've seen uh, scenes where I've been inside a cubicle and literally I have to brush up against the actual toilet bowl <laughs> to get yeah. out of the cubicle. Yeah. Like what yeah. the fuck? <laughs> um, yeah. I think I think the favourite one that I've seen. I think it was the Camden Blues Kitchen. Uh, where uh, you, where you just you wouldn't you you're like, I, I can't leave. I don't. I've just seen a guy take a piss. He's not washed his hands. That door handle is contaminated. I don't want to touch it. <laughs> and I'm having to wait. And you, um, and you waited for somebody to come in the toilet for you. And I thought, that yes, was I did. So, yes, I did. So for moments like that, don't drop it. It's, yeah. I get. I get why people might you know give you shit about it, but. Ultimately, it's unique. I've not seen it on any other food reviewers, yep. and it gives it, you know, births some quite funny moments, intentionally and, and, and unintentionally. So, I, I personally, I'm all for it. It's funny. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Fair, fair enough. Good, good stuff. Um, but yeah, no, we, uh, we we're massive fans of the channel, and uh, we obviously implore everyone on here to uh, to go and check you out because uh, there's some very informative great shots of the you know the, the restaurants it's it's really find some great places to eat in london um they're slick videos like the editing's great very stylish and Thanks. uh yeah so we're, we're, we're massive fans and uh hope that uh we can send a few people your way thank you thank you i appreciate it excellent right moving on to um i just want to before we move on to quivia just to let the guys know i've uh, cracked open the coca-cola zero uh cinnamon, cinnamon really and i'm cinnamon, I drinking... cinnamon. Yeah. yeah oh wow just out for the festive season and uh initial thoughts are eh, it's fine <laughs> it's um, <laughs> um it's not it, Weak. Uh, it's a it's a very yeah it's a very soft cinnamon flavour. <laughs> it's not like I, I much prefer hard cinnamon, <laughs> <laughs> fully erect if possible, <laughs> in stick form if you will. Oh god! Oh. And, I, and the weird thing is, I know that about you, so <laughs> um, it's fine. Uh, I'll let you do the full review, and it drops into your lap, Michael. But um, thank you. I, <sighs> High two, really? Oh wow! Oh dear! Yeah, actually worse than normal Coke Zero. So, wow! Right, say le the right. Please, let's... may I drop one p- small piece of news? Uh, you may. Yeah, yeah. Seabrooks Correct. have just announced a new sub brand or sub range of 
three new flavors coming under the Fire Eaters uh, name. They are hot, very hot. They've got a picture of a skull and flames on the packaging. Uh, yes. There's three flavors, chili and lemon. Yes. Uh, Smokehouse Cayenne. Yes. And the third one is the black packet, and I cannot make out what the text says because um, it's on the website The Grocer, and they lock their content behind a paywall. Idiot. So, uh, uh, so I can I, yeah, the image is too low quality to make out, and I can only read the first few words of the sentence. But yeah, that's interesting. And they will be amazing because Seabrook's in it. So yeah, Seabrook's great. Bradford represent. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Not bad, I guess. What? Oh. Seabrook's excellent. Sea salt flavour is amazing. And the new Alton Towers flavour, the fiery wood smoked barbecue, that is an excellent crisp and that is hot. Yeah. Have you had that one? No. The Alton Towers one? No. Oh, I, th- I think you'd like it. Is it only available at Alton Towers? No. All right. No, I, did. I saw it recently in a pound land. Oh. Ooh. We have those the in the north. The packet yeah. is like brown. It's like. Uh, woody and brown and like fiery and like the logo is made out of like f- like searing embering like wood it looks really really cool I'll check it out I'll have a look yeah yep 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 I'll be correct thank anything you anything else was that it no, that's nothing all I got. That's all I got. no 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 news from me cool 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 right then uh, let us dip into a little bit of Q-U-I-V-I-A Quibia really yeah right not not RQs uh, no, because no. I don't have them on me. I forgot to print them off. So No, no worries, then. Okay, cool. I'll edit uh, this bit out. No, leave it. Love if anything, of, yeah. Oh, <laughs> love behind the scenes bad Admin, stuff. yeah. Listen, that's what the listeners have been crying out for. <laughs> More admin. <laughs> Quivia. Right, guys, I did warn you that you may need a calculator. However, I suspect you could probably have a stab at this without it. It's nothing too difficult. I've got so, one. Tonight's show is all about supermarkets. Yep. Uh, what I've done is I've looked on the online services of Tesco, Sainsbury's, and Asda, the big three, and I've basically found five recipes for fairly popular dishes. I've got the prices of the ingredients for these recipes, and I, what I want you to tell me is how much the entire recipe, no, the entire ingredients cost. Right. There will be a bonus multiplier if the person who's closest can also tell me which of those supermarkets is the cheapest. Right. Okay? Okay. Yes. You with me? Yes. Ish. Okay. Yeah. There may be there may be questions during the course of the game, but yes. I think it's fairly it, it's it's more simple than it sounds. Okay. Okay. So first up, lasagna. So the ingredients I've got are I won't uh so this serves six. Right. So we've got two two tablespoons of olive oil, seven hundred and fifty grams of lean beef, beef mince, yeah, ninety gram pack of prosciutto. 800 grams of passata, 200 milliliters of hot beef stock, a little grated nutmeg, 300 grams of packed fresh, uh, sorry, 300 grams of fresh lasagna sheets, 520 grams of ready-made white sauce, and 125 gram ball of mozzarella. Yep. Right. Yep. Right. <laughs> So, roughly speaking, how much does all of those cost? And it's worth noting that, for example, the olive oil, I'm talking about a full bottle, essentially. I'm not gonna, you can't buy two tablespoons of Oh, well, I mean, that cha- oh, right. Yeah, well, that's yeah. completely changed everything then, yeah. Yeah, what an idiot. I missed one of the, I missed one of the ingredients. What was after the beef mince? 
Uh, um, prosciutto. Uh, pros- prosciutto. 90 gram pack of prosciutto. Okay. Uh, I'm going to start with Michael Jameson. <laughs> 13, <laughs> 13 pounds and 15 pence. 13, 15. M- miraculously, Stuart's going to have 13, 16, of course. Um, um, no, I'm not going to do that to you, Michael. Okay. I will, I will go with Stuart next. Right. I, I, I had a calculation. I was going for 14, 20. That was prior to your suggestion that it was going to be like a full bottle of olive oil and stuff. But I, I'm going to stick with it. 14 pounds, 20. 1420 and Riley 1499 £14.99 okay the cheapest that I could find it well hang on do we not have to say what the cheapest is no 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 I'm going to tell you what the cheapest figure is and then Ah. whoever was was closest will then get a multiplier if they get the correct supermarket oh fantastic Nate well done the cheapest that I could find it was ten pounds and sixteen pence. Very affordable. So Michael Jameson <laughs> wins. We'll double that if you can tell me. We'll double that if you can tell me whether it's Tesco, Sainsbury's, or ASDA, which is the cheapest. ASDA. Okay. You are correct. That is two points to Michael oh, Jameson. Scum! Absolute okay. scum! Next up, beef, beef stroganoff serves four. Wow. Right. One tablespoon olive oil, one onion, one clove of garlic, one tablespoon of butter, 250 grams of mushrooms, one tablespoon plain flour, 500 grams of fillet steak, Ooh. 150 grams of creme fraiche, one teaspoon of English mustard, 100 mils of beef stock and half a small pack of parsley parsley. I am going to start this time around with Stuart. 16, 17, 18, 19, 21. Oh, I mean, I've, I've, gone, I've gone absolutely mad. I'm going to say 23 pounds and 10 pence. Okay. Uh, Riley. Mm, 50, 51, 1. Said four, one, one. Hmm. So that's twelve. Twelve pounds. Whoa! Twelve pounds. Where are you buying wow. your fillet steak from, man? <laughs> you need to hook me up. <laughs> uh, Michael Jameson. Uh, Nate, I feel like I should confess at this point. Uh, you are speaking to a man who earlier in the day. Uh, Claire and I had some scales out. Um, I picked up a packet of chocolate chips, a half-eaten packet of chocolate chips. Uh, I didn't know the size. It was folded down um, with a small piece of sellotape applied to prevent the packaging from unravelling. Uh, I held it in my hands, and I said 63 grams, and I put it on the scales, and it was 63 grams. My friend, the cost of that meal is £18.22. and pence. I don't understand what the relevance of the, the fucking... The, the, you could guess the weight of something. <laughs> I'm just good at guessing numbers today. So. Uh, what was it, 18 also, pound and? 18 pounds, 22 pence. Also on a little bit on the roulette, which is more guessing the correct numbers. So. Interesting. Uh, the lowest I could find this uh, recipe was 21 pounds and 50 pence. Oh. Which means oh. that Stuart is <laughs> wow. the best person yeah. on this occasion. Stuart, Tesco, Sainsbury's, Asda, cheapest. The temptation, of course, is to go for Asda every time. It's uh, the temptation. <laughs> I'll go for Tesco. No, it's Sainsbury's. It is Sainsbury's. No way. <laughs> In fact, on this occasion, Asda is the most expensive. What? What? Correct. Madness. I still get a point, though, isn't it? You do get a point. Correct. Uh, Shepherd's pie. Serves four. Oh, here we go. One tablespoon sunflower oil. One large onion. Three medium carrots. 500 grams pack of lamb mince. Two tablespoons of tomato puree. Large splash of Worcestershire sauce, Worcestershire, uh, 500 mils of beef stock, 
900 grams of potatoes, 85 grams of butter, and three tables uh, tablespoons of milk. Riley is going to be up first this time. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just finish writing down the list. Uh, let's see. No rush. It. Stuart can edit it out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Lamb mints. <laughs> no, I've just, I've just seen a WhatsApp. Rich has sent a photo of uh, Terry's chocolate orange, and the supermarket label is Terry's Choco Ball. <laughs> what? Rich has sent a photo of Terry's chocolate orange oh, in a supermarket, and the supermarket have called it on the label Terry's Choco Ball. <laughs> what the fuck? <sighs> I mean, great. it's not like it's been around for decades that they could have in it. passed them by. All right, <laughs> I'm gonna go with fifteen pounds and ninety-seven pence. Crazy. Fifteen ninety-seven. MJ. Uh, sorry, I closed my calculator. Let me just put it back up. No, no, you can guess numbers because you can guess the weight of chocolate chips. So, Four, fourteen pounds and ten pence. <laughs> Stuart Bullock. Sorry, Riley uh, said. What did Riley say? Sorry. Fifteen ninety-seven. All right, and Michael said fourteen ten. Yeah. Yeah, fourteen nine. <laughs> yeah, twat. Yeah, I had twelve down, but I'm going fourteen nine. Uh, yeah, uh, it's a shame you didn't go for twelve. Let's just put it that way, because if you had, you'd have been much closer. But you still win, because the cheapest I got it was 18... Uh, sorry, 8.57. <laughs> 18 pounds, Jesus Christ. And Shepherd's pie sorry, how much? 8 pounds? 8 pounds and 57 pence. Including, what was it, 500 grams of lamb mince? Yeah. No. Yeah. You've, you've, wow. you've, miscal- you've miscalculated. <laughs> and Stuart, a bottle of please... Worcestershire sauce. Stuart, could you please tell me which 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 of the establishments which is the cheapest? Asda's is. Asda's is for the multiplier two points. Thank you. Right, lot of, lot going on this one. Oh God! Can you Se- just say it a little bit slower? Seafood paella. <laughs> so <laughs> right, ready. <coughs> yeah. Let's go. 20 to 24 king prawns. Oh, madness. Wow. Okay. I, mean, I told you I bought nine king prawns when I was on holiday in France earlier in the year, and they cost me 22 euros. Okay, but that was from a restaurant? No, this was from a fish market. I mean, I say king prawns. I mean, massive Madagascan tiger prawns. So not king. I mean, completely unrelated product, to be honest. I'll, I'll probably say you probably should have bought them in this country. Uh, three tablespoons of olive oil, two large onions, 500 grams of paella, paella rice, 10 garlic cloves, ooh, ooh. Two, two teaspoons of smoked paprika, one teaspoon of cayenne pepper, optional. Do we, is that Pinch- optional in the, in the price? Uh... <laughs> yeah, you're going to be adjusting the scores later, mate. It's a good question. I've included it, so no, shut up. A right, pinch of saffron. Ooh. Oh, oh, saffron. 400 grams of canned chopped tomatoes. 500 grams of mussels. 100 grams of frozen peas. A handful of parsley. Parsley. <laughs> One chicken stock cube <coughs> and one star anise. Right. Uh, this is MJ to start. Thirty-six pounds and sixty-three pence. Okay, thirty-six and three. Th- no, sorry, thirty-six pounds and sixty-three pence. I apologise okay. if I stuttered. Uh, Stuart, no, I just wasn't listening. Stuart. Uh, hang on, hang on. I'm, I'm using my calculator for the first time because this just yeah. got expensive. Wow. Uh, 600 plus 100 plus 160. Is uh, this because of Brexit, Nate? Is this just because... <laughs> 
I'm going for yeah. the year of my birth, 1955. Uh, Stuart, wow. 1955. Uh, and finally, Riley, Mr. Sorolla. 30, 33 pounds. Oh, my lucky number. Three pounds. What I won on earlier. Okay. Uh, the correct answer, the cheapest I found it, was seventeen pounds and sixty-seven pence. What? What? How the hell was I double? Um, I actually, fa- I actually found it cheaper, but I'm not entirely sure I had enough prawns, so I've added on an extra load of prawns. It doesn't affect the score. Um, going through the bins behind us, though. <laughs> correct. It's actually catching the prawns yourself. Um, <laughs> so, Stuart, nineteen pound fifty-five is closest. Please, Stuart, enlighten me. Tesco's is. I'm afraid it was in this occasion as stuff. Ah, oh. final one. Don't, I mean, don't really matter, does it? Walking away with this game, so... Uh, well, what if I get a times four multiplier? Doesn't exist, so... Well, let's well, let the Quivier well, master decide well, what, what exists. Well. <laughs> Roast chicken to serve four. Oh, here we go. Uh, so, we have a one and a half kilo chicken, whole chicken. Is it? Uh, is, is it a free range, or is it... Uh, it will be the cheapest chicken I find, so okay. probably not. Nope, that's cool then. One lemon, yep. 50 grams of softened butter. The softened probably doesn't really matter. Two teaspoon, uh, two teaspoons of dried mixed herbs. 750 grams of potatoes. Potatoes. About seven carrots. Two tablespoons of olive oil. 100 grams of frozen peas. 300 mils of chicken stock. And one teaspoon of marmite. Ooh. What are you doing with should the marmite? Your marmite, you dirty bastard! What's, what's uh, that for? It should be noted. I was just going to say all of these uh, all of these recipes were taken from the BBC Good Food website, and uh, so you can blame them because I've never seen marmite in a roast chicken. So no, I have no idea how much marmite costs. <laughs> it's about no twenty idea. About twenty quid a jar, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I've I, got no. I, I mean, I like it, and I've got no idea how much it costs. I don't think anyone's got any idea. Right. Marmite Fairies, bring uh, it to my house. Stuart, you're up first. 1329. 1329. Riley. £9.80. £9.80. And finally, Mr. Michael Jameson. £11.88. Oh, oh, oh. Ooh. I. I'm just going to point out that I must have miscalculated because I've got £42.87 on my calculator. Oh, no, sorry, you said £42.87. No. <laughs> no, sorry, no. 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 £11.88. Uh, the correct answer, and I think this might be the closest of the evening, £9.52. Oh. Great. Oh. Oh, get in there. Well get played. in there. Get the bonus Amid. points, man. A, man, a mere 28 point pence off. Uh, Riley, Tesco, Sainsbury's, Asda. I'm just going to go with the obvious. Asda. <sighs> Tesco, I'm afraid. <sighs> so, with that, walking away with it, unfortunately. I say unfortunately, I don't. Yeah. It doesn't bother me at all, really. Uh, four points for Stuart, two points for MJ, one point for Riley. But at least you got it at the end there, rather than at least you're not shut out there, Riley. Yeah. Foot in the door. Yeah. This, is, this continues. This this is and continues to be and forever will be my yard, boys. This is my game. You come into well, the, you got to take on the big dog, and no one's no one's rising to that challenge. I'm the great, I'm mouth. the greatest. I am the greatest. I think it's a lot of mouth for someone who hasn't been on a Quibia special. It's, I mean. I mean, yeah. when, I mean, it says a lot, doesn't it, when you have to do the Quivia special when I'm out of the country because you know that there's only <laughs> going to be one result if I'm there. Uh, congratulations, this... Stuart, for knowing the price of uh, Shellfish World on me. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> right, lovely. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, that was probably way more boring than I intended it to be. Right, <laughs> let us no, 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 no. Hang on. No, that was good. That was yeah. a solid Quivia, Nate. Well yeah. Done. yeah, three stars. Uh, 
peek behind the curtain that was the longest i've spent on any singular round of quivia that took me three hours to put together <laughs> wow uh, I've oh. basically not had a lunchtime over the last three working days. Oh, mate! Uh, while I was doing that, and uh... fair play, mate. Yeah, but yeah. you've ordered some lovely meals for home delivery. Uh. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. A lot of lasagna going on in this house. <laughs> I bought, bought it from all three places. <laughs> right. <let's move> <laughs> You're listening to Fruck Unwrapped, the Food Review UK podcast. This is MJ, and if you donate to us on Patreon, I will stop doing this stupid voice. Let's uh, uh, let's talk about supermarkets then. Let's uh, let's break down the world of supermarkets, aisle by aisle, if you will. Um, so obviously the supermarket world is broken down essentially into three three tiers. You've got your top end, uh, you've got your, your mid-range, your more affordable, and then you've got your, your values. Yeah. Um, let's just break it down, each one. Top end, what are our, you know, one-word answers, essentially. What What's our favourite of the two big hitters, I guess, Waitrose and Marks and & Spencers? Uh, let's start with Riley, since this is uh, his uh, subject that he chose. Do you, do you shop in either of those? Do you have a preference over Marks and Spencers or Waitrose? Sort of as a whole, should we talk? Should we say not just any particular area? Um, I would say Marks and Spencers. I'd lean more to Marks and Spencers. Probably shop there more often than Waitrose. I probably only go to Waitrose if you know there was no other choice. If there was nothing else in the area, then that's the only time you'll you'll catch me in a Waitrose. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What about, yeah. what about the other boys? Are you, are you Waitrose or, or Marks and Spencers, generally speaking? Oh, uh, generally speaking, no, no, no. Mar- Marks and Spencers is too expensive for a regular. <laughs> too expensive for me. Yeah. No, no. Um, it's... All right, then. What, what about the uh, what about the mid-range ones? Then you. So I've got here Tesco, Sainsbury's, Asda, Iceland, and Morrison's. Uh, you, Iceland mid-range. Iceland mid-range, really. Yeah, Mate, I, would... I was in Iceland at 9 a.m. this morning. I would not fucking call that experience middle class. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Did I, did I call it middle class? Mid range, I'm talking about being not completely cheap, but not expensive. I, I would put well, that in the same category as, as the others. Listen, it was fucking hmm. horrible. <laughs> I am never stepping foot in that shop at 9am ever again. It was disgusting. I needed a shower when I came out. All right, then. All right, I'll downgrade think, that to that. I think, I think it's in the category of his own, to be honest. Um, <laughs> it's like a it's like a, a posh version of... Do you, do you guys ever remember Quicksave? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember Quicksave, yeah. man, yeah. Was yeah. that spelled with a K by any chance? It was. Yeah, it was that K. K-W-I-K. Yes, it was K. Yeah. yeah. Quicksave uh, was... Yeah, it... They were the... Um, there were the no frills, the the black and white packaging. One of the first super, super cheap own brands. Don't think I remember them at all. Um, They're still around. They're still around. N- nah. Oh, no. Nah. They sold all their locations to Safeway about 15, 16 years ago when Safeway sold all their locations to Morrison's and shut. Uh, and Morrison's then shut down the quick save locations, I think. Wow. Wow. Um, I think, I think, I think, oh, touch wood, but um, I don't know if um, Morrison's is going to survive. Why? I think it's really the same. Yeah. Like, Morrison, um, no, no. like, I think, I think Morrison's are decent. I think they're pretty good for like certain products. They're really good, but I don't know. I could give you an example of a place where there was a Morrison set up. Then the massive Tesco's got erected yeah. and that Morrison's was bye bye. And the funny thing is on that road you have you have Sainsbury's. You, like this is walking distance. You have a big Sainsbury's, you have a massive Tesco's, and the place where Morrison's used to be, they shut down and now you have you have Audi and Marks and Spencers. Oh, well to to be fair, I only know one that's close to me like compared, like I know I think Aldi's the only other one that I know just the one of uh, other other supermarkets there seem to be more and more of but Morrison's literally just one in the local area so I don't really 
I don't really, I, I don't think I've ever really shopped in them, to be honest. Mm. Yeah, I, I only know of two. I only know of two that exists. Um, well, Morrison's but... have particular. Uh, it was true. It was you that got me on the Morrison's meat, wasn't it? Yeah, I, I, I'm. <laughs> I'm a big fan of Morrison's. We we have we have uh, two, three supermarkets. I suppose feasibly within walking distance, kind of 15 minute walk, and it's the Sainsbury's, Mozzers, and a little. Um, and then there's another couple of Mozzers, very very close. I've got, I can think straight away four Morrisons within like a four mile radius, and I wow, I, I rate them, wow. you know, for for so much stuff. Like I think the butcher's counter is better than any other supermarket, and we're getting kind of getting a bit ahead of the topic, but um, I, I do you know what? I think so much of it depends on what's traditional in an area. Like if you're that's it, the, I bet there's a big north south divide with supermarkets as well. You know, Morrison's are traditionally a more northern supermarket. Um, uh, yeah. I mean, a good, mm. good Yorkshire supermarket. Um, and I grew up, I'm from Bradford, which is the home of Morrison's. So for me, Morrison's has always been quite a high profile supermarket. And I haven't seen. I haven't seen that 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 death that Riley's describing, but I do think you know you go to different towns. Some a supermarket's going to rule that in another place might be on its ass. You know, Sainsbury's round here is not not really killing it. My local Sainsbury's is never that busy, um, but the local Morrison's awful on a Saturday afternoon. It's just pensioner land and it's rammed, um, but good meat, good meat. Oh, we'll come. We'll come on to that in a second. Um, MJ, so you're so you're pro Morrison's then, Stuart. MJ, what's your sort of? What are your proclivities when it comes to supermarkets? What's uh, what's your favourites of the of the three tiers? Yeah, I think M and S are incredible. They yeah. are. Uh, we've done one weekly shop there, um, <laughs> and ever <laughs> since then I've had financial difficulties. <laughs> 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 It's absolutely not appropriate to do that, and I can't recommend it. Uh, they are brilliant, though, especially with their recent sort of probably the last year or so. They've just been hammering out some absolutely crazy products. Like this Christmas, we got red velvet curd. That's mental. Um, so they're really, really good. Great customer service. Excellent bakery. Yeah, they're they're amazing, but you pay for it. Um, Mid range. Morrison's probably is my favourite. Wow! Um, Overall, the Morrison's or just on the meat. Uh, mid mid range. Um, no, but just just on just on the meat or just overall like the overall. Oh no! Experience. Oh yeah, sorry. Over, yeah, overall wow. because their price Impressive. is pretty good. Their range is quite good. Yeah. Um, their meat is really good. They've got like the one in Aylesbury's got like a hot food counter and that's really nice. Uh, it's got a make your own pizza bit which is quite good. Um, and oh my god, that's their fresh cream sundaes. I've never had something so indulgent in all my life. It made me feel sick. It was great. Um, <laughs> but do you want me to go on to lower tier? Yeah, please do. Yeah, yeah. Because that's where the king sits, isn't it? Little. Um, I used to think. Well, I used to think. I used to think that Lidl was better than Audi. Um, and then I started shopping, and the main reason was because Audi was so incredibly stressful. Um, but then there was a second Aldi built in Aylesbury and it basically shared the load between them. So it wasn't the hectic rat race that it used to be. And mm. Aldi, man, they're just like, uh, I mean, I would say most of their sort of products are better than Tesco finest um, and much cheaper. Like it cut our week. We used to do our weekly food shop at Tesco, cut our bill in half when we switched across to Aldi. Yeah. Um, you can go all out just absolutely smash it and be like oh fuck this is going to be expensive and they'll be like yeah 60 quid and you're like oh 30 each that's like not that bad uh, yeah. well hang on Love hang Aldi. on excuse me yeah I have to agree Michael when, when you do your weekly shop with your wife you split the food bill 50-50 yeah you pay you, you like pay half each yeah that's f***ing crazy I just swore I don't even swear that's how that's how insane <laughs> that is you yeah, wow. you split that's do you do you split the items as in like do you go oh this is for me this is for you or do you actually just go it's 60 quid and we'll split it down the middle or yeah down the middle sometimes i'll get a lego magazine sometimes clara will get a... 
Kand or some a unicorn or something with Gelly. I don't know. I don't know what she buys. A read the few. I don't know. Sometimes I get a Lego magazine. That's the oh, there you go. Oh, yeah. That's a funny bit, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Very good, well done. Ninjago um, figures ain't going to collect them. Hang on, right, can I just do a survey, right? We, we're, we're all married men, aren't we? Riley more recently than the rest of us. Do you do you and your wife do that, Riley, when you go to the supermarket? Like, oh, it's 60 quid, give me 30 quid. For us, it's a bit, it's a bit, it's not as um, straightforward as that. We We just have a joint account. Well, so, as do, as it's do, just, it's just, as do it's we. Just, it's just, yeah, it's just paid from the joint account. Yeah, you just pay, like, you get married, what's mine is yours, what's yeah, yours is yeah, mine. Yeah, exactly. Pe- Peterson? Exactly. Um, yeah. Just split. Just... Yeah, joint, no, no joint account. Yeah, no. yeah. 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 How... I, I, I will pay. If there's, a, if there's any items in there that is, like, for me, like, it's not part of the usual sort of weekly shop or anything like that I'll, I'll, I'll sort of pay for it so to speak because we sort of have a joint savings account the money comes out of there essentially yeah so if it's if it's something that's not usual sort of day to day then yeah i'll put that back in but otherwise it's 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 joint that... oh yeah 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 same same and you've been married for for what riley like is it like it's super recent isn't it mm, it's been it's been a couple of months now don't Co- let the um, don't let the youtube feed so alight. Couple of couple of months, couple of months now, and yeah. and or, and you just instantly at that kind of perfect <laughs> marriage, sharing everything. Michael Jameson has just celebrated his two year anniversary, and he takes money <laughs> off his wife at the tills at Aldi. <laughs> Scumbag. It's not really like that. It's more I. If, if it's we more had a he joint... submits an invoice. <laughs> <laughs> it's more you know if if we have a joint joint account. I mean, what happens if I just empty it on Lego? Which that is, is what you would do, yeah. Or yeah, comic books and toys. <laughs> it's dangerous. <laughs> no, Claire, Claire would never allow that. <laughs> oh, dear. I, mean, I love this. So, oh, so, I, I... so what? Your, what? your wages go into the same account? No, they don't actually, no. No. Our wages go into separate accounts. We put a massive chunk of money into a joint account. Um, yeah, that's how, you, that, that's how to do it. That's yeah. how to do it. Yeah. But um, so things like my car payment and mobile phone and stuff like that comes out of my account. Yep. But then what happens with they'll just literally when we go shopping, it's whoever pulls out the whoever pulls out the debit card first pays, and like it might get near the month from, uh, near the end of the month, and one of us might go, ah, I'm I'm a bit skint at the moment, and they've gone, oh, I'll pay for it. it. Doesn't it's it's all the same money. Yeah. Yeah. But then wow. do you just take it out of the savings then after that or something, do you? Well, or... Yeah, we either take it out of the savings or, or, or take it out of the joint account or whatever. or Yeah, but there's certainly no split in the bill. F- FYI, um, I, I feel like we need to splinter off into a new uh, podcast of let's talk about the crazy sh- marriage shit that MJ and Claire did. <laughs> oh, oh, dear. <laughs> it's like an after hours podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Their relationship fascinates me. Yeah. Husky, cover your ears. <laughs> <laughs> Dear me. Um, okay, let's, let's move on. This. Let's, let's break it down a little bit, bit more on the old supermarkets. Um, do we find any particular... I mean, obviously, you've already mentioned about Morris and the Meats, but are there any particular other areas that we find better uh, shopping at specific joints? If I'm getting coleslaw... <laughs> oh, it love has this. it has to be either Tesco Finest or Sainsbury's Taste the Difference. I can't I can't deal with I can't deal with Asda's range. I've tried Audi. I mean, I love Audi. I've tried Audis. I can't I can't really deal with it. It's disgusting. Once you go Finest coleslaw, though, that that's it. Yeah. You've killed it. It's a bit like once you start buying Pink Lady apples. You've, you've ruined the you've ruined every other apple you like you go you go premium at coleslaw you go premium apples you've killed the normal brands the normal range yeah, yeah. Is, is, is the moral of that story then don't ever do that never then you never treat yourself never treat yeah never treat yourself because you've made a rod for your own back <laughs> yeah. the coleslaw is one thing that i like uh, coleslaw like homemade and whatever or yeah. like restaurant but the stuff in the packets Looks absolutely terrifying to me. Because you're not know, the finest, mate. Bit mayonnaise and a bit vinegary. Yeah, a bit, bit too. Yeah, pungent and a bit too saucy for me. Mm. 
What about you, Stuart and Michael? You, have you got any sort of particular um, joints that you frequent for certain <laughs> things, or prefer at least? Let's talk about beer. Let's talk about beer. <laughs> uh, um, basically, every supermarket at the moment, um, Tesco's have massively upped their game. Morrison's have been really smashing it for about a year or so. Tesco probably just gone over them. Marks and Spencers have just really upped their game. Uh, Asda are lagging a little bit, but not too bad. And Sainsbury's uh, are awful. Is this? Is are you talking variety, or are you talking about their um, their sort of their own brands? No, I'm talking about I'm talking about branded stuff rather than own brand. Yeah. But yeah, variety of and when uh, uh, specifically craft beer. But um, yeah, uh, Sainsbury's is awful. Everywhere else is good. I can go to Morrison's. I can get four cans of decent beer for. Uh, I can get eight cans for about a tenner usually on nine quid. Sainsbury's don't even have those beers. MJ, where do you get your beers? <laughs> um, oh, that's funny, isn't it? You think I've got nothing to say, but I actually have, mate. Um, so usually Aldi's proxy products are fantastic, and I'll never speak a bad word against them, but they do do a proxy shandy, uh, I think the name brand is B- Bavaria. Is that right? Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but the the name brand Bavaria is really nice. It's a really refreshing shandy. But the Aldi attempt is not as good. <laughs> Do you find that, that No, I, t- I will tell you something. Actually, I did see a beer in M and S, and I was very tempted to buy it. It was a, I think, grapefruit and tangerine sour. Their own brand, I think it was. No, oh, those cans that they've got where they're all different colours. Yeah, they're yeah. great design. They do look Any great. Uh, I haven't. I've the the reports on those M and S own brand beers aren't tremendous. They do like a really? salted caramel porter that I was interested in trying, but I've I've given them all a wide berth. Fascinating that you don't really drink beer yet. You would be coaxed into it just because it's got a pretty bottle i think a sour beer could be the beer that won michael jameson over though yeah i think so yeah um watching your review the other day uh was it the uh, quake quencher it was a review quench quake. Br- on the Brood or quench quake yeah yeah you'd like that, that. looks that looks yeah interesting yeah interesting yeah i do ke- i've kept an eye out for the was it tart sour as well yeah because i've been meaning to buy that as soon as i see it since the review i haven't never seen it you get that in tesco's is oh really possibly morrison's is as well i might nip down tesco tomorrow see if they got that as coke yeah. as well yeah yeah correct um any other areas of the supermarket that we particularly like uh going to in terms of like I don't know, little just... little bakery. Oh God, little bakery. Yes, big really? time. Yeah. What? What? You're not. You know. You're not a fan of the little bakery. No, no. I can't really. I can't really comment on on, oh. on, on, on their bakery because I've never actually tried it. Oh, it's so good, man. It's good. Have it's you been? To, you've, good. You've, you've you've been to a little though. It's just you. Yeah, I've, right? I, I've been. I'll be honest. I'm not a massive fan of little. Oh. Um, my <gasps> wife knows. My wife knows. Like very very clear. Like I, I even. I get annoyed when she shops there. To be honest, <laughs> I get annoyed when she shops there. Like, why are you going to Lidl? Go to Audi. They've yeah. got better range. It's, it tastes yeah. better. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's, it's just, it, I it's was used to be avid Lidl, but making the switch to Audi, like Lidl stuff, is definitely reasonably significantly worse. I would say. <laughs> no. Um, I appreciate the the ridiculousness of saying reasonably. Significantly, no. Um, no, no. Have you seen? Never... Have you seen the? Have you seen the posters that they have out saying um, Britain's uh, um, best voted uh, supermarket? I'm thinking oh, how? The Lidl. I I seen it. I don't know if it yeah. was a while back, but I seen yeah. it. I'm thinking how ridiculous. How? Yeah, no. I, definitely th- not. I think it's probably just. I mean, I don't know. Obviously, I'm speaking only of our local area, like Stuart was saying earlier about Morrison's. But there's way more Lidl's around us than there are Aldi's. I literally know of, like I say, yeah. one. Um, it's in a dive town, and it's, yeah, it's very difficult. So I've never shopped. I, I literally, the last time I went in an Aldi was when it first opened. Wow. 20 years I'll tell, ago. Something I'll tell you something. Wow. I'll tell you something interesting. I think Aldi are only starting to, to step up because when I was like, I'd say 10, and I'm, I'm 31, I only remember ever seeing one Audi, and then I think only recently I'm starting to see them crop up. 
yeah. in different mm-hmm. places, like yeah. like newly built Audis. All the Audis that I've been to, they're all newly built. So they they are starting to step up. Yeah. I guess it's the same with Lidl. You could you could probably say the same about Lidl as well. And and Lidl expanding their stores as well. There are loads of Lidls recently have had extensions mm-hmm. and have been uh, making the shop floors a lot bigger. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we've got two mate, two near us that are yeah. like that. Now you've got to get down Audi, mate, honestly. Like I would honestly say I would honestly say it has improved my life shopping at Aldi. I eat nicer food because of Aldi. Okay, I'll, I will counter that with it would probably take us 45 minutes to get to the like the uh, the nearest Aldi that I'm aware okay, of. Okay, well, okay, so instead of doing a weekly shop, do a monthly one. <laughs> <laughs> or, <true>. or no. <laughs> uh, we don't really have the room to buy a month's worth of food, Michael. No. You're living in a dream world, my friend. Where, Where... did you live, George Green? No, I've moved from there a while back. You know this. Oh, you live you near you live also, near Clown now, right? Also, let's not talk about where I live on <laughs> on the podcast. So people can hear specifics. <laughs> oh, sorry. Are they going to go to they going to go to Slough and be like, oh, look, there's Nate's house. <laughs> no one's going to go to Slough. I've been recognised <laughs> in Slough, so up. it's very possible. Grow up. <laughs> I mean, you, you've got Rich who basically stalked you in Aylesbury, so who knows? <laughs> the information out there. Um, yeah, I've got no, I've got nothing against Aldi, Aldi. It's just that I haven't, literally, it's just not convenient to me at all. Lidl's is way easier to get to. Yeah. There's, there's li- there is literally a little, at the, I literally take two turns on the road and I'm, I'm, and I'm there. Oh, that's sorry, you don't, you don't want to tell people where you fucking live. Now they know they've just got to go to Lidl and don't t- take two turns right. I didn't, a, I didn't say right. I just said two turns. And well, B, it's going to be right, is it right? And B, it's on a corner, so they could go in four different directions. So <laughs> Great, now we know it's at a crossroads. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, um, uh. It's come up a little bit here. How do we feel about own brands? <laughs> Boner. Depends on the product. Yeah, uh, yeah. It really massively depends on the product. Uh, but you know, you've got you've you've got your typical products that. Well, for me, I can't I can't do own brands. So, for example, mayonnaise. Oh. I'm sorry, but it has to be. It has to be Hellman's. Hellman's, yeah. Um, ketchup. Has to be Heinz. Uh, has to be Heinz, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. But, you know, things like rice or even bread. In fact, actually, funnily this, um, apart from Warburton's, I actually prefer the supermarket's bread compared mm-hmm. to, like, Hovis or, or um, what's that other one, King's Mill? I'm not yeah. a massive fan of Hovis and Kings Law, and I feel like they burn they burn their crust. Mm. No, you know have the edges the... get all, all really dark. Mm. Have you had the Aldi bloomers? Oh, absolutely beautiful. Absolutely yeah. beautiful. Correct. That is one of my favourite breads. It's like if I'm in Aldi, chances are nine out of ten times I'm coming out with that with that bloomer. Yeah, really good. <laughs> malted one is for me. Malted malted oh, bloomer. Michael, you're speaking my language. That's it. That's it. I, I feel sorry for you, Riley, if you're speaking <laughs> <to his language. laughs> Um I think this is something MJ put in one of our WhatsApp groups. Uh, you were saying about sort of the evolution of the the own brand and how their uh, uh, the supermarkets are being a little bit more brave, maybe arguably more so than some uh, recognised brands. Definitely. Have you seen uh, Sainsbury's latest? Go on. Choco Bros. Bro- uh, no, <laughs> Brussels sprout flavor and pigs in blanket flavor. What is it? <laughs> Crisps. Sorry? Crisps. No. Popcorn. No. Um, Chocolate. Um, ice cream. Rice. Rice cakes. Ooh. No. Cider. It is <laughs> tea bag. Tea bags. What? Tea bag. What? Yeah. Sainsbury sell Brussels sprout flavor tea bags and pigs in blankets flavor tea bags. Sounds like vomits. That's, yeah, that's uh, that's a cheap pop, that isn't it? They're just trying going for a a cheap bit of Christmas hype. 
yeah, yeah. that's it well, i mean and i'm okay with it just a throwaway random mental product fine go for it but it's that kind mm. of thing it's like like that is the kind of product that is oh i've got to try that once and definitely never buy again brilliant bring it on to me fun. that's um, to me that's great like gift territory that's sort of you know someone who either yeah. absolutely loves brussels sprouts or either or hates them mm-hmm. and it's just you know a lot I, 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 who's out there who's out there drinking a cup of tea and going do you know what this needs <laughs> sausage <laughs> Um, yeah, that's mental, and and obviously one that's very popular and doing the rounds on on the social media at the moment is the uh, the Christmas tree flavored crisps from the aforementioned horrendous Iceland. Um, it, it, I I feel like we're getting to a point where these supermarkets are starting to just one up each other for the sake of one up. Yeah, you know, yeah. It, and I, the consumer wins. Well, I don't do know think? if they do, Michael. I, th- I think what you're, what you're seeing is companies potentially ploughing thousands, if not millions, probably thousands, uh, into developing brands that ultimately aren't going to, you know, be long stay or or actually enjoyable. I'd rather they were using that to make flavours that were good. Mm. Yeah. Fair comment, but I would conversely say that what percentage of food that everyone eats is uh i'm not talking about like lamb mints or whatever but what percentage of product actually stay around i mean apart from your mars snickers like walker's crisp whatever like almost everything is temporary almost everything it uh, is but it, <laughs> it, if if it's good enough it will stick around surely mm. uh, or, or at least it, there's at least a better chance of it Let's go back, what, 50 pages on the Food Review UK YouTube channel. In fact, no, I want you to do me a report of every product that's ever been and <laughs> detail when it started, how long it's been around, whether it was limited edition, and uh, we'll, Jake, we'll see. I, Jake, I, so I knew I already started it. Well, I already <laughs> started it, so... I, I, I don't think that you... I think you find that the vast majority of products in the supermarket are mainstays. But you just notice those ephemeral products more because they're not always there. You don't notice Uncle Ben's rice. Uncle Ben's, no, yeah, Uncle but... Ben's rice has been there for your entire life. You don't notice yeah, flora. I... Yeah, but I, I'm I'm not really talking about spread. Like, I can't believe it's not butter or whatever it's called now. It's really fucking good. It tastes, and it's not butter or something, whatever they call it. Yeah. <laughs> Can we call the name of the title whatever I just said then? <laughs> um, um, yeah, uh, stuff like that. that yeah, obviously you got your mainstays, but okay, I'm I'm thirty pages back now. Let's just have a look. And obviously, I do n- new products, so maybe oh. it doesn't count. But all Sweet I'm saying shop, is ice lollies, Tesco. All I'm saying is pigs in blanket crisps. Very good chance of sticking around, or at least coming back every Christmas. Yeah. Christmas tree flavored crisps, not so much. Yeah, I oh, pigs yeah, in I totally agree bags. with what you've just said, but I think that the Christmas tree crisps in that area are so important because they are so fun, so fun, so interesting. A fucking tree flavor crisp? Are you all right? <laughs> I'd, I'd 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 rather they put that money into something that actually was taste tasted good and was still quirky. You just said red velvet curd. That is both unique and probably tasty. So why can't they do that with something else? Why are they just throwing, oh, it's Christmas, so let's make a tree-flavoured crisp, because then that gets people through the door, and then they buy more of our shitty little frozen food. That is the problem with it. Hang on, haven't they got more than just that one new flavour, though? They have, but no one's talking about the other ones, are they? Uh, oh, sorry, but are they more mainstays? Uh... Can't, <laughs> you can't get it both ways and complain about it, mate. I can. Yeah, you just did. <laughs> um, Stuart, have you got any thoughts on own brands? <laughs> Please you know, get us away from this era. <laughs> um, do you know what? I, I, there are certain things. I, I t- totally agree with Riley. There are certain things, like, for example, ketchup, where I absolutely will buy a brand. Um, things like crisps. Um, I, I, no, having said that, that's nonsense. I'll often buy an own brand crisp. 
uh, it, uh, you know, if I'm buying a large sharing bag of crisps, I'll tend to buy whichever premium variety is on offer for a quid. So be it a Tyrrell's, Michael's favourite, or be it a kettle chip, or be it a supermarket's fa- own brand finest, you know, large sea salt and balsamic vinegar crisps or whatever. Um, uh, yeah, but um, all over own brands, absolutely. Um, I disagree, but I, t- I tend to... Bread, I tend to buy... If it's a loaf of bread, I'll buy branded. Um, I'll buy branded crumpets. Because I'm yet to find an own brand crumpet that really, really does it. Although Sainsbury's taste the difference. Buttermilk crumpets are very good. But yeah, no, I like, I like I'd, own brands. I'd like to, I'd like to say something. Uh, Aldi, so I just saw an Instagram post earlier this evening. Aldi have released sourdough crumpets. Oh, oh wow. I'd be tempted oh, to try that. Which is weird, actually, because uh, mm. listen to the show and you'll get a cheap pop for the fact that I'm using his name in a positive tone. Uh, Eric Bylanok, uh he recently tried crumpets for the first time and he said they tasted like sourdough, I believe. Hmm. Interesting. So, yeah. Mm. Um, but he's a fucking moron. Yeah, go fuck yourself, Eric. Um, actually, so, saying that about crumpets, I we tend to not. We tend to buy own brand because we've recently... On two or three occasions, bought I can't remember which brand it was. I want to say it's Kings Mill, oh, but one of the pants. And it, but we never got to eat them because literally, even though the best before date hadn't gone, they were mouldy. They literally on three or two or three occasions we bought them, and even before their best before date, they had gone mouldy, sat in our cupboard. So they seem to be shitty products. Mm. Uh, the only thing on the own brands that I would comment on is when we used to shop more at, at Lidl, I used to find that a lot of their um, chocolate bars were amazing. Like their, their knockoff, so to speak, Mars and Snickers and Bounties and Twixes, Twixes, um, <laughs> they tasted to me just like the real thing. And arguably, I think it was the Snickers variant was better. I actually preferred it slightly to, 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 to oh, actually, I think it was the Bounty one. Um, yeah, so they they some of these uh, some of these joints are now stepping up their game when it comes to the uh, own brand shit and uh, definitely rivaling some of the brands. Yeah, I think yeah. people, I think consumers are, are becoming a bit smarter about that. I think yeah. long gone are the days unless unless you're getting the actual real proper cheap basics blue blue stripe stuff. Mm-hmm. I think it's part 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 to do with the fact that the own brand products are significantly better they get them they yeah. get them better over time yeah. like you can i could say 20 years ago who would who would eat an own brand uh cornflakes tasted like gloop yeah yeah, yeah. tasted absolutely disgusting but you know now it's, it's 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 quite similar to the real deal yeah 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 and usually so they massively, are getting better. usually massively cheaper as well yeah so that's obviously it's, the draw yeah. for it um, exactly. No, I, I think they've. I think the companies have stepped up their game, and I think, and also I think the the fact that Lidl's and Aldi's has got this bigger reputation, it's, it's allowed people to be a little bit less snobby about mm-hmm. what they buy. I think there's there's always that always been that sort of element of not wanting to pay cheaper because it makes you look like you're cheap. Um, yeah. Whereas because those have stepped up their game, it arguably means that just generally shopping. Oh, if you you know if you buy own brand stuff, it's not quite as uh, socially crippling as it used to be yeah yeah this yeah. doesn't quite speak into that point but i had avoided places like Lidl and aldi for quite a while um because i just had sort of assumed that the quality was much lower Same. but like i say with with aldi the quality is better like it the the uh, quality of aldi products is better than the other mid-range supermarkets really you, you'd go that far and say they were definitely better oh easily I would. Across I wouldn't the, even say. I'd say easily better across the board. I would uh, say me, more specific areas. Morrison's for me definitely is 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 significantly better than any others that I've tried. Mm. The the one downside to to Lidl's, and I assume Aldi probably, but I, I could be wrong, is the level of choice. Is that they just don't? I mean, the Lidl's that I've been just don't necessarily have the same variety. Yeah. Um, not uh, a brand I'll, per se, but of, of say, actual sort of items. I say Aldi's got more choice. Things like pork and beef mixed mints is something that's new in there. Uh, boneless chicken thigh fillets. Um, loads of meat in Aldi. Cool. I have noticed something about Lidl though. 
they even they have a they have a more limited range than Audi, but I have noticed that they do sell more um, recognized brands than 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 Audi does. Yeah, 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 oh. yeah. They've definitely Lidl have moved more towards the the branded things, whereas Aldi have got those kind of weird clone brands, and um, Lidl have got them all side by side. Likes, comments, likes, follows. This isn't any ordinary social media. This is Food Review UK social media. Come find us at facebook.com forward slash Food Review UK. On Twitter at Food Review UK. And on Instagram at Footgram. Oh, and don't forget the main channel, Food Review UK on YouTube. And it, the one thing that I'd, I don't know whether Aldi have it. I know there's the joke, isn't there? Like, I went to Lidl to buy some milk and potatoes and came out with a two man pop up tent, a trumpet, and a, and a new <laughs> pair of step ladders. I, don't, I mean, you've, you've also got that kind of insanity of the middle of Lidl's. Aldi's the same, isn't it? You've got those. Yeah. That's, and yeah. That, that's, I mean, that's fun, isn't it? You just don't know. You don't yeah. know which way your day's going to go when you walk into one of those supermarkets. <laughs> <laughs> the, the number it's of times your own adventure. Well, you can, I just stand there. I'm going. Do I need a pair of like uh, reinforced work pants? Like, like, <laughs> the ca- like car- yeah. carpenter's pants? No, I'm a music teacher. I definitely don't need <laughs> carpenter's pants. But and I st- they do these really impressive clone brands of even stuff like Claire was saying. Oh, that's that's a a clone of makeup things. She's like, that's a clone of Elf. That's a clone of Myx. Blah blah blah. Uh, yeah. Even things like Joe Malone. They do like quite reasonable really good smelling like joe malone clone soaps and whatnot and candles home it's <laughs> home home alone. Home alone. <laughs> <laughs> macaulay culkin reference brilliant macaulay <laughs> macaulay, well, can't, macaulay Cul- can't, can't we just move on <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think we're going to um let's sort of take a bit of a, a left turn here any of you guys worked in a supermarket i have Used to, once upon a time. Uh, any any stories or anything interesting from that you'd want to share? Any what's your experience of working in that? Which in supermarket? supermarket? Fucking boring. Which one was it? Uh, Tesco's. Right. I was on the um, <laughs> it's on the uh, on the counter, just just scanning items, wow. just, just like brain dead. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing much. Just nothing much more to to add to that. No, all right. Stuart, yeah, I, I worked, you you yeah, I worked in a, co- a co-op food market, so uh, kind of mid-sized supermarket, um, and did everything from shelf stacking to the tills and stuff. But like some of the people, we, I mean, like, some of the stories, I was trying to think some stories, and some of them are just too tragic. Um, <laughs> like you'd see the Mainly same people. Well, yeah, you'd see the same people all the time because it was in a small, you know, a small town, like. There was a guy who used to come in. I think his name was Roger, and I, I think he was an alcoholic. Well, he, yeah, he was an alcoholic. Most of these stories revolve around alcoholism. But um, <laughs> ro- whenever he, Roger used to come in and buy his booze, and he would get his money. Every time he would get his money out of his pocket, he had like a a large tooth in amongst his change. So he'd be he'd get his stuff out, he'd be rooting around in the palm of his hand, and there'd just be this what appeared to be like a shark's tooth that he carried around in his pocket, and like. You want to ask him all the time, like why? What? Why have you got your? Why have you got a tooth there? But you, I mean, it's frowned upon, isn't it, to question people on the contents of the pockets? Um, I don't know. I think I, I think if someone's got a tooth in their fucking pocket, it's verging on psychotic. Yeah, I mean, def- I think he, he definitely was a murderer. Um, there, there was another guy, right? There was this guy who came in, and I was I was stacking the shelves on the on the beer aisle, and there was a guy, and he uh, he was talking to me about this I can't it's called something like Jaguar Lager and it was this cheapo lager that was about two pound for four cans but the lager was only about two percent strength so he was he's saying something about it to me like oh I, I buy this I really like this and I'd said oh you do know it's only like two percent though and it, and he said yeah but then I, I also buy a quarter bottle of whiskey and put whiskey in the beer to, to top it up to strength like why not just what? buy like a stronger beer in the first like what a <laughs> mad thing place. to do like this was this guy saving money tip buy cheap weak lager and pour whiskey into it yeah <laughs> crazy Fun- funnily enough I never started doing that I used to love the shoplifters 
that was always like full on bants when you used to get like shifty guys would come in. Like everyone it's like the meerkats, everyone like is up like <laughs> on high alert. Always they love a bit they love a bit of bacon, the shoplifters. They love the bacon. like and you would catch people going out. Um like very occasionally we'd have security guards on and they would catch them and they would just have bacon stuffed ev- into every available part of their clothing and body. Like just <laughs> covered in bacon. Um <laughs> Like Lady Gaga. Like Lady Gaga, yeah. Or Martin Gaga. Keown, yeah. Um, Gaga. Yeah. <laughs> Lady the best thing about working um, in the supermarket was that on a Saturday night, if I wasn't working, because um, the, the shop was open till 9 or 10 o'clock, so on my way out on a Saturday night, I would go in and hopefully, hopefully a lad who I worked with would be on the cigarette counter and I would get my cigarettes for the night back in the day when I used to smoke and he would just make up the price, which is brilliant. Like 20 Marlboro Lights and he'd go, I don't know, 17p and just make up the price and I would basically get free cigarettes, which is theft. But, you know, it was great when I was 19 and skint. Can I... What's the logic behind making up any figure? Like, if if it's that cheap, like, why not just give it to you for free? Still looks dodgy, that doesn't it? Transaction happens. <laughs> what, Cap- supposed to selling twenty fags for seventeen. Pay? Yeah, but no one knew. You see on the camera, like you just see man buys yeah. man buys packet of cigarettes. You don't. You're not zooming in on the till, are you? Couldn't you just go through the fake transaction and just pretend to hand over money then? I suppose you could, but I'm not that good an actor, Nathan Peterson. You might feel <laughs> you've got you've got that performance within you. I never felt confident with that performance. <laughs> But you're good enough an actor to believe that those those bags cost seventeen p. Yeah, yeah, I can do that. I can do that stretch. Yeah, fair play. It's, pr- it's probably the real price in in the north. It's brilliant, yeah. brilliant. Um, MJ, MJ, work in a supermarket? Nah. Yeah, yeah. So I worked nah. in Waitrose. So I got a few few stories from it. One's definitely worth telling. Um, Did you work with? Yeah, Jesse? it was. Uh, no, we just just missed each other a little bit. I think. Um. I uh, yeah, it was it was a quite a not bad work experience for like a first job kind of thing. They're a good employer. They taught me a good solid foundation about customer service, um, and I there were definite perks to the jobs. Uh, I worked on the food counters at the back. Primarily uh, started off as delicatessen. I then moved over to primarily uh, the pastry or patisserie one, uh, which was the delicatessen. You sort of needed two people to run it pastry it was a separate counter so you sort of ran it on your own so there was a bit of responsibility and all that kind of thing um as Stuart said yeah same people come in we had this one guy came in every single day just before closing and he'd ask for all the cheap stuff he'd go oh you can you can do a better price than that and he had a very rich full beard he wore sort of quite baggy white clothing uh and sandals so uh obviously we called him Jesus um and yeah, interesting. And I, I got to do tricks like I'm sure I've mentioned this on the podcast before. My favourite product from the pastry counter was the white chocolate and raspberry amaretto gatto. Because uh, unlike other gattos, the the actual main portion of the of the product was like this rich, creamy, almost like a white chocolate ganache. Amazing. So when that had to be sold that day. Uh, the the protocol was to I would get in at about five or whatever and work for about three three and a half hour shift, uh, and the protocol was to reduce it three times. So first of all, you drop it from one pound nineteen to like one pound and nine, then you would drop it to like eighty nine p, and then to get rid of it, you would drop it to sort of fifty nine p, maybe a little bit less. They wouldn't want to sell things for too much less than that. So <clears throat> my protocol on that particular product was get in. Reduce it to like one pound and nine pence, leave it for like three hours, then reduce it to like a pound and then maybe not even reduce it again. And then it doesn't get sold. And I'm like, oh, fuck, four slices. I'll have them nine P each. <laughs> um, so that was like that was like the main perk. My, my, my best story. I have to tell this story as an anecdote. Um, it was it was uh, Claire and I had started our relationship, and um, we were discovering not only our, our personalities and um, <laughs> uh, um, but you know, but also each other's bodies. Oh um, God! 
<laughs> so uh, I worked at Waitrose whilst I went to college. So uh, I went to college one day and, you know, we had like a long lunch or whatever. So we went downtown, bought some products. Uh, one of the things that I purchased was a small bottle of Durex Play Lubrication. Oh, um, oh. So, oh, fine. Great. Great. Doesn't matter. Good. Uh, went off to work, pot- potted off to work, did my shift, no worries whatsoever, we're, we're all good. Um, then I leave, and I leave the locker room and I walk towards the front of the store, which is where, uh, for some reason, the area manager is in, um, and a few sort of security guard type people. Uh, and it transpired that they were doing bag checks <laughs> in case anyone had stolen anything. Now... Uh, I told you about the Gatto situation. Another thing that I did, which is flat out theft, because uh, basically at the end of the day, if the stuff hasn't been sold, then you weigh it all up and print off a barcode and mark it as wastage, and you can't take that product. Um, but sometimes they'd have these little like chocolate gingerbread men, and I'm not going to buy them. Like I have no interest in buying them. But if there's like ten gingerbread men there, it seems so bad to throw them away. So I used to just sort of. Uh, pour them into my apron and just wrap them up and take them and that is <laughs> actually. Um, <laughs> and so I was I was thinking to myself oh thank fuck for that I'm glad that I didn't like and that was that was the extent of my theft I didn't do anything like I wasn't like yanking packs of whiskey <laughs> pack, packs of whiskey <laughs> packs of whiskey off the shelf um, so but I, I was like oh phew at least I ain't got any gingerbread men today <laughs> Um, so, me being me, I have to give it a bit of bravado, and Ellie, the area manager, was like, yeah, we're doing bag checks, so can you just check your bag? I was like, yeah, no worries at all. And me being me, dickhead MJ, made a bit of a joke about it, and he started of completely unaware and oblivious to what he'd purchased earlier in the day. He started narrating the items in his bag. So he was like, it's my house keys. Um, oh, that's a magazine. That's a blah, blah, or whatever. And then I was like, oh, that's a small bottle of lubricant. Um, and I was like, and, she, and there was basically this like question of like, um, you shouldn't really make sure you keep the receipt. And I was like, yeah, sorry, I will definitely keep the receipt in future. Um, but I don't think we sell this lubricant. And it, I, was, I was mortified at the time. Um, but now I'm confident enough to retell the story. Oh, my Lord. And how will your oh, wife no. feel about you telling us this story? I think she'd be fine with it. Good. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't know where to go from that. <laughs> thank you, thank you. To slip out of it. Find a way to slip out of oh. it. Uh, let's move on smoothly. Um, oh. Do any of you use online delivery? Yes. <laughs> Next. <laughs> do you find it useful? Like yeah, it? I use it use it very occasionally. We usually we usually use it when we are completely busy and can't find any time to shop and we know we know we've got this coming up. And um, we use a cardo. Um a little bit more expensive, but they are really good. Fair play. Uh you have the two gem- gentlemen, do you use the online delivery at all? Online delivery. Um I have not personally used it myself. I just feel like you're giving them all the power. I mean, when I go to the supermarket, mm. I love to. I'm, I'm, I'm one of those annoy, annoying cunts that, you know, fiddle around with the shelf and gets the, you know, the fresh <laughs> bit right at the back. <laughs> and I know they're not doing that for me for a delivery. So, yeah. like, no, no. Yeah. Better play. Sure. Yeah, we've used it a, a, like a handful of times. It sometimes can be very useful. Um, very occasionally, if you know a supermarket has got a product. Um, that is going to be hard to get. I might jump on the online delivery and try and secure that product, but uh, for the most point, most part, um, now we'll just tend to do it ourselves. It's part of the fun, isn't it? Yeah, I agree. Well, we, we... I'll tell oh, you sorry. something. I'll tell you something interesting. Um, well, as you know, in the UK, we've got to pay 5p for bags. Was it 10p now? Can't even uh, keep up. Depends on it? the bag. Depends on the bag. So, um, my wife, who was my fiance at the time, she she used to do deliveries. Um, obviously, now nah, she uh, she doesn't do deliveries because I frown upon it. But um, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> she she told me that when she used to deliver them, she would request to have no bags. 
So they wouldn't charge it for the bags. Yeah. But they will still deliver the goods with the bags. Ah. Uh, mm. Yeah. Yeah, we we uh yeah, the bags. The bags is a weird thing when it comes to these levels because we we get it most weeks. Um, we've used Sainsbury's, ASDA, and Tesco, and we've we've basically had issues with uh, Sainsbury's and ASDA, which is why we now use Tesco, and it's just purely a convenience thing. My wife um, uh, doesn't work two days of the week, and so those days are easy for her to get the, the shopping delivered. But to take a, a, a two-year-old child out is just a chaos so it's just easier to get it delivered um but anyway we, we get tesco and we quite like it because the bags they sort of try and separate out everything so if it's a replacement item it comes in a yellow bag if it's frozen it comes in a blue bag if it's fruit and veg it comes in a different bag. so you yeah. sort of know instant, instinctively which yeah. bag contains what type of items sainsbury's and asda's though the amount of times they'd come with their little cartons of food and there'd be like five bags in there that have nothing in like it would just be weird you'd have one bag which has like one tin of baked beans in it the next bag that has like three items in it and then there'll be just three random bags just thrown in there that has like nothing in it whatsoever whatsoever which is really really weird it just flies in the face of everything this country's mm. trying to do with with plastic bags it's mm. just like oh yeah we really want you to come in with your own bags and sort it out in the shop but if you get it delivered, fuck it, we'll just throw as much plastic at you as possible. It's just a very weird mixed message. Yeah. Ocado are quite good in that they, uh, they're also coloured like the uh, Tesco ones, but they also give you, if you return the bags, they knock the like 5p off per bag. Oh, fair play. So that's um, good. One thing I did want to touch on just briefly here, it's just been in the news lately, is that Waitrose, I don't know if we've seen this, Waitrose trialling... Um, deliveries actually in your house while you're out uh so basically what? they there would be a smart lock on your door which would have a code ah yes i've seen the amazon do that as well don't they yeah the, the driver would get the code at the, at the assigned delivery time he could come into your house while you're out somewhere else at work or whatever uh put away your shopping and then leave and when he leaves the code is deleted and they would also have body cams on so you could then watch the video the next day to make sure that they've not done anything and Sniffed your underwear and stolen your, your <laughs> diamond Boop. rings or anything like that. <laughs> Unless you want them to sniff your underwear. Well, exactly. Why are you leaving it on the counter side if, if not? Um, was that something that would even remotely interest any of you? Nah, no, I don't want people calling Hell house. no. Hell no. Hell no. Maybe like a, nah. a little outside refrigerated bin. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. No. Yeah, that, that would work. Yeah, yeah, that would make more sense. No, I'm not having, they're not coming into my house. It's no. just, I don't know who would do that. Like, I, I get the idea of, oh, I'm, yeah, I'm busy. I've got a busy lifestyle. It's, it's great that somebody can come when I'm not here. I don't have to be here. But to let a stranger into your house, even when you've got a body count, it's just mental. Stuart, what's the matter? I was just laughing at the, the sentence that you said, which was it was it was puerile and immature, and I'm not repeating it. No, please, in front of the class. No, <laughs> no, it was rude. <laughs> it was rude. It was. Um, about people coming when you're not there. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'd like to ask to a... podcast? No. no. Oh, <laughs> I'd like to ask a quick few, uh, a quick question. Fascinating question. What day do you do your weekly shop on? Whenever. Don't have routines. Routines are for nerds. Wow. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, we tend to get it delivered on a Thursday. Nerds. That's weird. Because Riley? that's the day that my wife is off work. Usually on the weekend, but um, could be a toss up on any day, really. Okay, more sensible. Yeah. M- MJ, what day do you do it? Uh, I, yeah, Saturday. Saturday or Sa- Sunday. Crazy. Usually Saturday. Saturday Insanity. at a specific time as well, but eleven twenty-seven. Uh, Usually about. Yeah. Morning, Saturday morning. <laughs> you sometimes go to the shop at midnight, correct? Yeah, I do. I like a nice Tesco midnight. Yeah. That's a winner. Yeah. Uh, that's actually quite fun. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mi- midnight Love Tesco midnight. Midnight Tesco. Yeah. We did that the other a, night. Actually. Relaxed. A relaxed. B you get soundtrack. C uh, you get to spot all the gnarly brand new midnight releases and you can have fun by 
by opening the packaging on the on the trolleys and getting them out and before and then you had the trouble at the till because they haven't put them in the system yet so you, <laughs> you got to go back and get a similar product that it, it, uh, no it's great it can often be a bit on top as well because you'll you sometimes get a few people who might have had a drink or who might be walking around slowly because they might have been having a little might have been having a little smoke and have just had a wander to the midnight tesco's <laughs> And it's uh, yeah. that's always good fun. So you could because you could pretend well, like you're in I... pretend you're in The Walking Dead or something, can't you? <gasps> oh! <laughs> I completely forgot that The Walking Dead started this week. Oh, oh, oh you're doing an that. impression oh. of yours. Um, oh. I like I like what happened to me the other day where there was that like six year old boy run, wandering around at like quarter past twelve, and Madness. I was like, "What the fuck are you doing here?" <laughs> <laughs> he was in the Toy aisle of all places. I <laughs> know oh, that was what the fuck am I doing in the toy aisle at 12 a.m. Correct. Following six year old children. <laughs> yeah, um, correct. In order to grow the Food Review UK podcast, we'd like to ask all our listeners and subscribers to drop us a review on their chosen podcast application. With your help, we can grow the podcast to such an extent that we had no need for the Food Review UK YouTube channel and its owner, Michael Jameson. There is a little favour that we'd like to ask of you. Just head on over to iTunes and leave us a positive review. 1,000 five-star reviews and MJ dies! Hurrah! Right, before we uh, close this out, just one very quick question. Um, Do we believe that basically uh, people who don't know how to use the self-service checkout should be shot if they occupy time at a self-service oh, checkout man when when someone's got a member of staff there scanning their shopping for them at the self-service <laughs> checkout I, I it drives me insane you know i feel when when people are getting the unexpected item in the baggage constantly uh, you feel their pain because it's happened to all of us but why why is that why is that elderly woman forcing <laughs> forcing the person who's supposed to be supervising all 12 of these self-service tills why is she having her scan her shopping for her don't just go to another till go to another till i've not seen that oh, oh i've seen it way too many times yeah, yeah. 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 wow like, i didn't even know this was a thing yeah i yeah. mean it is a relatively simple task you put your bag down on one side you scan it you put it in the bag on the other side yeah. How people can get it wrong? What's the matter, Michael? Oh, can I just say uh, uh, the, the the scanners are getting better. Yeah, they Have are. You yes. guys used a cooperative self serve scanner? <laughs> no, they're, they're all cool. fucking mental. Literally, they're supposed to be cooperative. Literally, uh, you, you literally go like this, right? The, the scanner's like what two feet away. You're like whoop. It's like boop. Croissants go. It's like fuck. <laughs> Brilliant. Do you know what I've got to say? Uh, fair play to I think it's Morrison's and Sainsbury's now that are giving you the option to not bother printing a receipt. That's a winner. Yes. That's a winner yeah, because I, I don't want it. In the last, the last two or three weeks, every not only the self service, everywhere is asking me if I yeah. want a receipt printed. Yeah. But they say, do you want the receipt? But here's the thing, Asda. You say yes, Asda. Why do yeah, I so. why do I need to watch myself on a video screen while I'm scanning my shopping? <laughs> it's, it's so that you can pretend that you're this working there, maybe. Like what? maybe people have got fantasies of working at Asda. What's it about? Like, what? Is it is it is, mean, is it supposedly some kind of like you 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 can see yourself there? Is it going to stop you pulling any swift ones? Is that the idea that you think that maybe. you're being watched? You know. It's 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 a deterrent for shoplifting. And I, it just yeah, doesn't make any sense. Like oh, practicing some faces. Like trying to bizarre. Gurning. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Making a face every time that it beeps. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like I like the idea. Alright, lovely. Yeah. Um Michael. Michael yeah. Jameson. Yes. Yeah. Sock med me. Oh, we're remembering social media this time around. Right, so we've got exclusively you, quest What? Literally, for the last like half a dozen or so shows we have. So yeah, shut, your, sorry, shut your yeah, fucking joking, pie hole. Get on with joking, it. Joking, innit? Um, literally, all of our questions come exclusively from Instagram this time. Well, so yeah. do remember, guys, we post a thumbnail a few days before and we ask your questions. We will rattle through these. 
Review Snacks UK says, what's your supermarket meal, deal, a sandwich, snack and drink? Uh, I suspect I'm probably one of the only people on the list that does this. Uh, it would be a uh, probably egg and bacon triple with... <laughs> I've killed you, With... Depends on what crisps I, I fancy on the day, but often not something like a ready salted or prawn cocktail, and then a drink. I'd like cherry coke, but not many places stock cherry coke, so it just ends up being maybe something like a capella. Mm. Wow, capella for lunch? Yeah, baller. Weird. So, what apple juice for lunch? Yeah, sorry, having capella after twelve p.m. Weird. Grow up. No, you grow up. Next question. Unless anyone has answers to that. No, I don't. Really, I don't really do that. So. Yeah, I, I don't do it even, man. Riley, what's that? <laughs> do you do, do, you do the, uh, supermarket like sandwich meal deal thing? Do you do that? Sometimes, um, but well, it's only Tesco's. Uh, I don't. I don't really like Sainsbury's meal deal. And I've never ever tried as this meal do I ever. Usually I get honey and mustard, uh, what's mm-hmm. it, chicken and honey mustard um, pasta. Good choice. I would then get uh, the big eat quavers. And mm. um, with the drink, it really just depends what mood I'm in. Mm. I think I've only done it once. Uh, the one stop one's quite good because they've got some quite weird, like you get like a snack in there as well. So they do like little tiny chicken satay and whatnot. But yeah, like I said, I think I've only done it once and whatever. Right, next question, Mom. Carl PW95 says, what supermarket, in your opinion, provides the most value for money and why? What aisle do you head for first to look for new products? LD is the best value for money by far because they do excellent, good quality products and they are good value and you do not feel like you are being ripped off whatsoever. And I would say the best aisle for new foods is usually crisp snack aisle. Um, yeah, probably little because I can't speak to Aldi. Or alternatively, of the slightly larger brands, uh, sorry, larger shops, Asda, uh, because of their variety and they're usually reasonably plus. Although you end up then spending more money because you buy shit that you didn't want in the first place. Yeah. Uh, and aisle, yeah, crisps probably. Yeah. Um, best value for money, I have to go little because that's that's I don't I don't have that experience of Aldi, and I go to the Lego aisle and the beer aisle. Priority in that it? order. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the Lego aisle is usually first. Yep. Yeah. Um, Aldi. Aldi would be best value of money for me because uh, you make the saving and you're not compromising on quality of food. Um, the first aisle I'd probably go to. Would be the bait goods. That nice. Yeah, fair. Okay. Frankie Funko says, if you could create a combo mega supermarket, which aspects would you take from each supermarket, i.e. Asda's mental last products, Aldi's cheapo knockoff brands, Morrison All Northern Grand Charm, etc. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I think she's just, yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah she's done it. Yeah, yeah, she's great. Maybe, maybe, maybe throw in meat from Aldi or Lidl's because they're quite meat, decent. Meat from Morrison, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Joe Camp, best country for supermarkets, America, obviously. Yeah, yeah. They're uh, something else, yeah. aren't they? Yeah, they are yes. something else. It's ridiculous. Oh, what can I find in here? Oh, literally everything. Yeah. Uh, very quick question, actually, Riley, because you do uh, travel as part of your um, channel. Have you found yes. supermarkets any any decent supermarkets in other country? I'll be honest. Um, I feel like I feel like I feel like the UK's supermarket game is a lot better than than Europe. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like yeah. by miles, by miles. Um, I just I don't know. I just find that they even the layout. It just seems so premature. Hmm. And and the yeah. products are not as they're not as diverse. Yeah. yeah. But, but but you will find but you will find some cheap items there. Yeah. And sometimes yeah. they'll sometimes they'll excel at one thing. Like they might have like a like you go France and the bakery just destroys 
like yeah. UK supermarkets yeah. or whatever. But in general, I think we've got we've got it good. We can't complain about supermarkets in this country. No. One thing yeah. that I did find quite cool though was um, where was I? I? Was in I was in Italy. Yeah, I was in Italy, and I can't remember the name of the supermarket, but it was. I was quite impressed because it it, it did stand out in terms of the layout, the the range of food and everything. But when I got to the self, because they had a self service checkout as well. Once I put all my items through, got the receipt, I tried to come out, and the I don't know what would you call it? the barrier. It wouldn't open. It refused to open. And I'm looking <laughs> around, going, "What the hell is going on? Why why can't I go through?" And the poor lady, like she couldn't speak English, she was just just <laughs> pointing at my receipt. And then I looked at it and I went, "Oh, there's a barcode. Oh, I'm supposed to scan it." You, you scan a little thing oh. and then the bar is open and you can go through. So I thought that was quite, I thought that was pretty cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a clever idea. Yeah, yeah. We've, uh, when I was in, I was, I was, <laughs> when I was in uh, Spain 18 months ago in Bilbao, supermarkets uh, there had like lockers to put your bags in because you weren't allowed to take like, a rucksack or a bag into the supermarket. They must get a lot of, a lot of thieving. <laughs> In the, mm. uh, on the continent, but yeah, I think I, I think I had a stew in Bilbao once. Uh, <laughs> Fifty million, <laughs> great, great reference. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and make that one day. Built, but whatever it's called, Bilbao <laughs> stew. Uh, the Cookie Mill UK. I like this question. Must you park as close as possible to the entrance of the supermarket, or do you not mind parking further away and walking? I always park. I park further away and walk. Try to get the steps up in it. Uh, wow! As, yeah. As somebody who's not particularly uh, comfortable with parking, I tend to park wherever there's three spaces next to each other. <laughs> nice. Um, I do. Um, yeah, I usually don't mind walking. I I want less hassle, so I'll go to a like, disabled a, bay. an aisle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll go and, and push a disabled person out <laughs> um, or r- roll them out. <laughs> um, no, sorry. Jesus Not all disability God. is visible. Sorry. Um, I will look, I will go for an easy aisle, but I will say that that is one of the absolute pleasures of the midnight Tesco trip. You're getting the, you're getting the number one spot in you. Usually you get in top five spot. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. Next. Um, he's also said, "Fuck, marry or kill, Tesco, Aldi, M and S. Marry Aldi, fuck M and S, kill Tesco." Correct. Mm-hmm. I agree. Three. Even though I've, even though I've not been to Aldi, yeah, you probably you you need all three. You need Tesco for the products. You need Aldi for the weekly shopping. You need M and S for the premium. Mm. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. And his last question is funniest thing you've ever seen happen in a supermarket. A Some guy child get... at midnight. <laughs> <laughs> Some guy gets lube out. Ooh. <laughs> oh. Uh nothing funny. Supermarkets are a serious business. <laughs> I um I was once walking around Morrison's with my headphones on um and realised that everyone was standing still. I was like, "This is weird." Took my headphones off. Realised that it was eleven o'clock on uh, oh, on no. um, <laughs> Armistice Sunday. The entire supermarket is standing in silence for a minute. Silence, and I'm walking around, carrying on, browsing the salad, looking for that fresh salad at the back. More than likely, rapping a Paul, like rapping Wu Tang lyrics as well, like yeah. out loud during the minute silence. Yeah, so that would have been fun. Oh, and those, those, I didn't those see crispy. Those crispy salad bags are oh, pretty yeah. rusty as Making well. all the noise, yeah. So, yeah, I didn't see it, but I performed it. <laughs> Incredible. Riley, you seen anything funny in a supermarket? Uh, nothing comes to mind, <laughs> no. Fairs, fairs. Uh, Luke Carrigan says, Do you remember what Morrison's was before? Uh, yeah, Safeway. 
Made a so joke at the top. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't the same company, just that loads of... I mean, I think that Luke thinks that Morrison's took over... So Morrison's took over Safeway's um, locations. Morrison's isn't Safeway. So that's uh, Stuart telling Luke to go fuck himself. Next <laughs> yeah. question. Okay. Uh, why are Tesco superstores so far away? They're not. I've got two quite near. Yeah, so have I. Uh, yeah, little is OG Aldi. Oh, this is a great question also from Luke. Why does Lidl smell like... Sorry, why does Lidl smell just like Spanish slash Portuguese supermarkets abroad? Bakery, I fucking love that. <laughs> it's true, they do smell sort of... Mm-hmm. It's not unpleasant, but it is distinct. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I, I never noticed that, it. No. That foreign smell. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's why yeah. Riley hates Lidl's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No comments. <laughs> <laughs> and I think last up we got Orish Plinski. I never know how to pronounce the name, so I just do it like that. Uh, what's up, fellas? Thank you. Hello. Uh, what is your worst experience in a supermarket getting bag searched? <laughs> uh, either working or just as a consumer? Uh, probably slightly. The, uh, the Waitrose Delicatessen Counter had some really, really thick skinned on the bone ham and some really quite blunt and inadequate knives to cut them with and as a seven as a as a 15 year old boy uh, who's never really sort of done cooking or whatever learning to carve thin slices of ham with literally like cutting through leather on the top that was fucking hard that was tragic and mm. because you put the ha- you pick up the hat, you first of all you have to reach over to the front of the counter, pick up the heavy ham, then you have to put it down on the spiky metal plate, then you have to put a uh, hold it steady with the meat prong, and then you have to slice it. And when that knife reaches the metal plate at the bottom, that <coughs> that that shrill noise that everyone hates, ah, oh, horrible experience. Yeah. Sounds horrible. Yeah, uh, yeah, happened to me all the time as well. <laughs> I was literally going to be the story I was going to tell, but uh, you've stolen that from me. And yeah. if you could create a supermarket, what would its name be? Riley's. Oh yes, that's that's good. That's good. See that works. Yeah. That works. My... I'd rather go for Riley's than Stewart's. Or, no Bull- or, or Bullock's. Yeah, Bullock. That's yeah. a butcher's, isn't it? Yeah, it'd have to be a butcher's, yeah. 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 Peterson's. <laughs> it's awful. I, 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 I don't have any... Uh, yeah. Nothing... Nothing... Funny. Uh, mine, <laughs> mine would be... Nate, Nate mine Breeze. Is... <laughs> <laughs> My mine isn't funny either, but it is it is a great suggestion. I'd probably call mine value play. Um <laughs> after the lubricant the slogan would be <laughs> <laughs> The slogan would be you're making the value play. Um and finally they've said <laughs> cracking podcast boys, keep it up. <laughs> Thank you. Why uh, love, why was love? That, uh, Stuart's face. Uh was that Oluchi Plinsky? Oluchi Thank you very much. Thank you, Michael, for the social media comments. Obviously, everybody stay tuned a couple of weeks' time when MJ drops another one of those posts on Instagram and uh, let us have your questions each show because it uh, provides great content. No, no, Um, thank you for giving me the opportunity to let our viewers and listeners have a voice. No, and thanks, Stuart, for being excellent. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, it's been an absolute age. Stuart? Correct. Do you want to play a game? It's time to play a game. It's time to play a game. Let's play a game. It's called Sweeter or Seven. We put the name of a food stuff out of a hat. You tell us what you can think about that. Or will the next food stuff be Sweeter or Seven? Sweet 
Right, it's been a very long time since we played it. I've got no idea what the high score is anymore. I know Jason Cockcroft smashed it about a year and a half ago. Um, but we haven't played it for a while. So, I'm starting the scoreboard new now. New, new what? So, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm wow. just... I'm uh, rebooting. Just rebooting. Does that, wow. that, yeah. does that mean that everybody except for Rich gets a second crack at this? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, excellent. New 52. Here we go. Right. Riley, the first product out of the Northern Flat Cap is... Here we go. It's still... It's the first time out. It's still and cheese, my friend. Still... Oh, oh no, wow. it's not the first time out. It's the third time out. It's crazy. Still and cheese. Um... Will the next product, Riley, be sweeter or savourier than Stilton cheese? Savourier. Savourier than Ooh. sweet and Stilton Ooh. cheese. We have Flaming Hot Monster Munch. Second time Ooh. out of the hat. Flaming Hot Monster Munch. Is that, that's, a sa- that's a savourier product than Stilton cheese? Yeah. Yeah, of course yeah. it is. Yeah, yeah. You're on two. Will the next product be sweeter or savourier than Flaming Hot Monster Munch? I'm going to go Saviour. Oh, 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 you savage. Oh, oh. Gambling, man. Here we go. Saviour than Flaming Hot Monster Munch. Shuffling them up. It is not Saviour than Flaming Hot Monster oh. Munch. It's the original Oreo. Oh. Oh. It's game over, man. Three. So you're at the top of the scoreboard, but that's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's getting beaten next time. Definitely. Three. That's, that's about as bad as it gets, isn't it? It's, yeah. yeah, I mean, the, the man who says savourier than than flaming hot monster munch is is uh, is walking a very fine line, and it didn't work out yes. for you, dude. Sorry. It's a dangerous Fortune. game. Yeah, fortune favours the brave, though. I mean, that could have yeah. that could have been an amazing play if he'd gone for if he got marmite or something. Yeah, didn't yeah. know, didn't know, did he? So no, I'm, I'm yeah, I'm just trying to be positive. I'm just yeah. trying to be nice to our guest, <laughs> Stuart. Thank you for playing anyway. Um, Thank you. That is basically everything we've got time for then, I think. Um, thank you for joining us, Riley. I hope you've thank enjoyed you. your, your first time on the uh, Unwrapped post- Podcast. It's been fun. And, uh, yeah, I'm sure we'll uh, have you on again. And uh, just want to remind the uh, listeners where they can uh, where they can find you. Yeah, so, uh, as I said before, my main... Um, Main hub is my YouTube channel. I don't really have a, an actual blog uh, website. So it's um, forward slash Riley Sirola. You can find me on Instagram as well. Again, forward slash Riley Sirola. And um, that's about it for now. Um, plans for next year, probably to have a, you know, a dedicated website. Nice. And um, just push out more awesome content. Yeah, any, any, any big any good or big reviews coming up that you're planning um well there's been there's been a push to review crepes and cones uh, cool. it's supposed to be a really big deal so um but i've heard i've heard a lot of bad things about it to be honest but i'm going there with clear mind so, so crepes and cones crepes and cones that's got to be that's got to be a play on words hasn't it that's got to be a, a play on crept and Conan. Yeah, must be. Are they like sh- that? Makes me think like maybe they might even be involved because that sounds blatant. <laughs> I've th- surely like like grime legends have not like m- <laughs> like branched out into desserts. <laughs> surely not. <laughs> well, you never know, shit. You never know. Um... <laughs> Well, yeah. Anybody, uh, anybody out there? If you, uh, if that sounds good, then uh, obviously go and check out Riley. As I say, we 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 highly um, highly endorse this channel. Amazing stuff. Thank you also to MJ and Stuart, whose contributions are always appreciated. As they say, every little helps. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you. Uh, I'd I'd also like to thank Riley and just give him my stamp of approval as well. Uh, <laughs> I think the the. <laughs> The the list of UK food based YouTubers or food based reviewers, I guess, uh, is 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 it's growing. Um, but I think Riley's one of the best. Um, slick, stylish, uh, great personality, and it's very interesting. Um, you do get some good good uh, London restaurant ideas. So 
go and check out his channel. Correct. Yeah. Oh, all, all stuff I said earlier, but thanks yeah. for repeating it. Yeah. And finally, well, but, yeah, oh. sorry, the founder. Sorry, the founder of the channel said it now. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, need, no need to pull rank. Uh, co-founder of the podcast said it earlier. And finally, thanks to the listeners for continuing to tune in. If this is your first show, please hit that subscribe button. Leave us a review. Um, we'll be back in a couple of weeks with a show all about the fantastical world of curries. Ooh. But until then, the store is now closing. Good night. That was a slick, slick, slick ending, Nathan Peterson. Yeah, I'm glad that it was it was met with uh, silence from yeah. everybody and nobody said goodbye. Yeah, either probably so. put a um, like a tumbleweed sound effect in at the end as well. Yeah, great stuff. Yeah, yeah. Oh, was that yeah. a joke? <laughs> no, <laughs> no. What a joke was that? Not really. Brilliant. Not really yeah. a joke. Just a, a themed good. goodbye. Brilliant. Yeah, it was just good. good. Yeah, greatness, greatness. Once Wonderful. again, once again, the end of a podcast ends in just dog dog shit. Dog shit, yeah. Yeah.